Hello everybody and welcome to this session. Today we are going to discuss under material sundering there are some specific topics that we go through starting from objectives, principle, how to select material handling equipment and when to design material handling when we require material handling. Material handling involves the movement, handling, storage of materials during different stages of manufacturing at the lowest possible cost through proper method and equipment. In this statement, there are important terms, that is, it involves the movement of the materials from one place to the other place, handling of the materials, storage of the materials even, by the way, we can store the input, we can store the output, we can even store the in-progress materials, in-process in materials with the lowest possible cost. Under material handling, we have to minimize the cost in order to maximize the profit using proper method, using proper tools and equipment. We can also state that material handling applies to the movement of raw materials, parts in process, finished goods, packing materials, and disposal of scraps. It applies the movement of raw materials, that is inputs, parts in process, those materials which are in work in progress, those materials which are not finished goods, which are in between raw materials and finished goods, and the last is finished goods, packing the materials even after we finished the production of goods, we have to pack the products and even it includes a disposal of scraps, disposal of wastage. Through scientific material handling, considerable co reduction in cost as well as the production cycle time can be achieved through material handling through scientific material handling by using or by applying scientific material handling for example automation we can achieve the reduction of costs and the reduction of the cycle time that means the time wasted in from the process from the input side to the finished goods or the cycle time for material handling, on the other hand, results in delay of in delays leading to the idle the increment of idle time equipment. On the other hand, for material handling results, an increasing of the cycle time, which ultimately increases the cost of production. And finally, we may dissatisfy our customers by delays. Although it does not add, material handling does not add any value to the product, but what is the, mo the main important here is that even though it does not add any value to the primary product, it reduces the cost of production. That means it increases our profit. It increases our profit. Coming to the objectives of material handling, the first objective is to minimize the material handling cost. Ultimately, it reduces the total cost of production. Second is minimize the delays, minimize the time, the time taken by production or the cycle times, the overall time required for production purpose. And interruptions, it also minimizes the interruptions by making available materials at the right time and at the right quantity. And the third is increased productive capacity of production facilities by effective utilization of capacity and enhancing productivity. It enhances, it increases productivity. And the fourth is maximize utilization of material handling equipment. It maximizes utilization 
of material handling equipment. And the fifth is prevention of damage to materials provided safety in material handling. By providing safety for material handling, it prevents damage and it as a result, we can reduce the cost, the cost of the production and lower investment in process inventory. We reduce the investment in the process inventory, in process inventory. Moving to the cost of material handling, there are different costs which is associated with material handling. Cost of material handling equipment, which includes both fixed and operating cost. Fixed costs can be the purchasing cost or the initial cost of the materials, the price of the cost, and the, co the operating cost may be associated with the operators or the routing costs. And second is cost of labor. There are direct and indirect costs in this case. The direct cost is the, maybe the operator's cost or the indirect cost maybe the cost associated with cleaning the cost associated to keep the safety or security and so on are associated costs with indirect cost and the cost of maintenance of equipment damages lost orders by the way when there is maintenance of the equipment there is maintenance cost the damage cost maybe there is a damage on the products and we have we may lose our order and expediting expenses we will be in a rush to meet let's see when to design material handling when we require new material handling the first is in the case when there is a new product a new product demand when we implement new product when we introduce a new product we have to have new material handling design as per the requirements of the new product and second is changing the existing product design even though there is no new product if there is a need to change the existing design so there is a change in the design of the material handling in order to satisfy that change. And the third one is obsolescence of facilities. When the facilities become obsolescent or expired out of time, so we may update, we may change, we may implement the advanced technology. So during that time, we need to design material handling. And if there is also frequent accidents, if there is frequent accidents occur in our production process so we need to establish we need to do a new design for the material handling because the material handling may be the cause for the frequent accidents so to reduce that frequent accidents we have to design material handling and the other circumstances adoptions of new safety standards when we want to adopt new safety standards when we implement, we introduce new safety standards, so we have to change the material handling, the material handling. Proceeding to my principles of material handling, these principles are needed when we design material handling. During the design of material handling, the following principles have to be remembered, have to be considered. The first is space utilization principle. While we design material handling, we have to keep in mind that we have to use the maximum possible space that we have. Maximum optimum use of cubic spaces, not only the floor plan, we have to remember the height we have to remember the cubic spaces and the other is unit load principle that means increase quantity size weight of the load handled 
as per the capacity of the material handling equipment, we have to use as much as possible the capacity as much as possible. We have to use the full capacity. That means we have to use the full capacity of the material handling equipment. And the other is gravity principles. Here, utilize the gravity to move a material whenever practicable. This means if it is possible to move the materials using gravity, that means gravity is a natural phenomena, so we have to use that gravity. We have to use that gravity rather than handling the materials in order to decrease, in order to reduce the material handling cost. So if possible, we have to use gravity principle or using gravity to move materials from one place to another place if it can be applicable. And the other is simplification principle. Eliminate unnecessary movement. As much as possible, we have to reduce unnecessary movement. And the other is safety principle. Not only the other parameters, but also we have to consider, we have to think about the safety principle. We have to provide safe handling equipment, safe handling methods and equipment in order to reduce the accident, the accident on the equipment, the product and our levers. And the sixth one is flexibility principles. Use methods and equipment that can perform variety of tasks and applications. We all know that our production process is not static, static so it changes with time because of different circumstances, because of new product design, because of the changing environment, because of the demands of customers are changing, we have to change our material handling as per the requirements of the product. So our material handling should be very flexible. If that's flexible, we require less amount of money to change to other types of material handling. Or it should incorporate or it should accommodate variety of tasks and applications. That's what called principle. Along with the principles of material handling, we have to think about the following factors which affect the designs, which affect the selections of material handling equipment. Actually, it's obvious that the decisions of material handling affect us, the overall cost, both that means both fixed cost and variable cost. So the following factors affect us, the selections of material handling equipment. The first one is properties of the materials to be handled. Whether the whether the materials or the product or the inputs are solid, liquid, or gas can be determined the types of material handling equipment and layout and characteristics of the building that we have, the warehouse, the production room, and the type of the room determines the layout and the types of the building determines the material handling equipment, selections of material handling equipment. And the other is cost consideration. The cost consideration is also another factor which have to be. For example, if the materials form may be gas, liquid, semi-liquid or solid, solid, the nature of the materials by itself, the nature of the inputs or the resources by itself, it may be bulk, unit load, individual items, fragile, Ready, bulky. These characteristics have to be considered. The characteristics, whether it is chemical, electrical, mechanical, this is also another consideration. Quantity, pieces, pounds, gallons, and others are the materials characteristics. The material characteristics that is to be considered in selecting material handling equipment. 
And the other factor is the move. The source and the destination, that means the movement of the materials. The receiving, stock rooms, warehouse, same floor, other floor, other department, that means the source and the destination should be considered, whether it is far, whether it is near, or the upward movement, downward movement, and so on. The route, the location, range, path, cross traffic, the distance, horizontal, vertical, inclined, distance, frequency, intermittent, uniform, regular, irregular, and unpredictable, and the speed are the factors which is included under the movement of the materials. And the other is the methods. The unit or load, bulk items or containers, manpower, one several, many or none, the manpower required for moving the materials, the equipment, the conveyor system, forklift, truck, crane, and etc. These have to be considered while we select material handling equipment. Material handling equipment majorly can be classified into two categories which are the fixed pass equipment, which move in a fixed pass, like, for example, conveyor, cranes, and hoists. This material handling equipment has a fixed pass, a fixed pass, and they move along that fixed pass only, along that fixed pass only. And second is variable pass equipment. Here, there is no restriction in the direction of the movement, for example, the robots or the industrial trucks can be can move the materials from one place to the other place as we want. So here they can follow the variable paths, the variable paths or different paths. Unlike that of the fixed path equipment, they can travel, they can move the equipment, the, the materials through different paths, through different Puzzles. This is all about today's discussion. If you have any question or comment, you can write on the comment box. And if you want further reading, you can read these references. Have a good time. Bye.